Anne, how strange to be teaching you when I'm not in the room. But I guess this is how it has to be for a little while. So I'm just going to share my screen so that I can talk to you about what we're going to be doing in this lesson. Right. So this half term, we're going to be thinking about painting and drawing. And I'm hoping that if families are following along at home, that you can do the same. If you're in school today, then you are going to be using these materials. We have some black card. However, if you're at home and you don't have black card, that is not a problem. If you have any white paper you can use, that would be brilliant, or black paper. Um, if you don't have black or white paper, then maybe you could use the back of a pizza box or any kind of cardboard that you have at home. You could use other coloured paper too. So. As long as you've got something that you can use as a background, that's what we need to get started. In school, we're also going to be using chalk pastels, as you can see on the screen there. If you don't have chalk pastels at home, you can use wax crayons or oil pastels or coloured pencils or any drawing implement uh, that you want to use to draw an outline today. Later on, we're going to be doing some painting as well. So here at school, we have uh, acrylic paint and we'll talk about the colors of the paint later. But if you're at home, you can use any paint at all to do this. And obviously you're going to need a brush and a water pot if you are painting. We're going to be looking at this artist today. He is called Jasper Johns. Now Jasper Johns is an American artist He's famous for his bright paintings, which are similar to pop art in style. This painting uh, of an American flag was inspired by a dream he had of the flag in 1954. The dream was so vivid that it made him want to paint what he had seen. He painted this one in an encaustic way which means by mixing hot wax with his paint. And this painting, would you believe, sold for millions of dollars. Now, if we look closely at the painting, I think we can see some kind of lumpy uh, texture in the painting, and that is the wax that he mixed with the paint. Our artwork today, though, is going to be based on another one of his paintings called Zero Through Nine. And as you can see here, uh, he has drawn all of the numbers from zero all the way up to nine, overlapping them one on top of the other. Let's have a think just for a minute about that word. Overlapping. The meaning of the word overlap is to make one thing partly cover another thing. If we put it in a sentence, we could say, Elsa drew her numbers in the same space so that they were overlapping. Let's activate that word. Can you show me an action with your hands that expresses the idea of overlapping? Hmm, what could we do? I think if it was me, I might put one hand like this and another hand slightly over the top so that they're partly on top of each other. I can still see both hands, but I can see that they're overlapping. What can you do with your hands? If we have a look at this one, this painting of Jasper Johns, we can see that he has painted colours in between each shape that he created by overlapping his numbers, making the numbers harder to see. So our first job, on whichever background we've chosen, uh, using whichever drawing utensil we've chosen, is to draw our numbers starting with the zero and then going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, overlapping the numbers and creating these patterns as we can see here. Now, let's see how this is done. We've only drawn the outline so far, but I love it! 
the next part. So now that we have drawn our outlines of our numbers overlapping, our next step is to paint in between the shapes that we have made with different colours or contrasting colours so that they can be seen one against the other. We're just going to use two colours as we do this to simplify things. I want us to have a little think for a minute about colours. So let's just have a look at some types of colour. Now I know in year one you've already talked about this, um, so let's have a think. There are three colours, three colours which make up all of the other colours that we can find and they are called primary colours. Okay, so as you can see here we've got yellow, blue and red. They are the primary colours. Next we have secondary colours. And we get those by mixing the primary colours together. So I'm going to test you, and I'm sure you will know the answer to these. But have a little think. What would happen if we mixed blue with red? What colour would we make if we mixed blue with red? Have a little think. It is purple. Hopefully you got that one right. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. What would happen if we mixed red with yellow? Hmm, what, what colour do we make when we mix red with yellow? We make orange! Fantastic! Okay, let's try the next one. If we mix yellow with our last colour, which is blue, what colour do we make when we mix yellow with blue? What is it? It's green! Excellent! Okay, so these are the secondary colours. Now we can make different shades of the secondary colours depending on how much blue we put in the yellow. It might make a bluey green or it might make a yellowy green. If we put a bit more blue in our red it would make a bluey purple or if we put a bit more red it would make a reddy purple. And the same for the other colours. Okay, and these ones we call tertiary colours but we don't really need to know that yet. So let's have a look at what we really are thinking about, and that is, it says here, complementary colours are colours which make each other seem vibrant. In other words, they go really well together. They make each other look alive when they stand next to each other. So they're really good to use. Funny thing is, the ones that go together really well are the opposite ones on the colour wheel. So if we have, if we have a look at this colour wheel here, I could drag green over and pop it into my t-shirt there. Now, what is the complementary colour to go with green? If it is the opposite one, the opposite one on the colour wheel, what is it? You're right. It is red. Oh, I'm trying to drop that in there. Let's see if I can. There we go. Red. So green and red are complementary colours. What's the complementary colour for blue? If I put blue there, which one should be in the shorts? Complementary to blue is. You're right. It's orange because they are opposites on the colour wheel. Okay, let's have another look. If we dragged in yellow to the top there. Which one should be in the shorts if it's the complementary colour of yellow? You've got it, it's purple. So when you paint in the shapes, in the, uh, the little gaps in between your lines you've drawn, let's concentrate on complementary colours. So you're either going to use yellow and purple, red and green, or blue and orange. Okay, I'm going to use, I've got blue here in my takeaway tub and I've also got orange in my takeaway tub. So I've chosen the complementary colours blue and orange for my painting and instead of a fancy school water pot I have a bean tin. Uh, that is what I'm going to use as my water pot. So we can use anything we have to hand at home to help us with that.
Okay, so it's time for us to stop painting now. If you're at school, you will have run out of time by now. Um, if you're at home, I guess you can carry on a bit longer. But don't worry if you didn't manage to get all of your little sections painted in yet. This is just the start of it and we'll carry it on next week. If you're at home, I would absolutely love to see what you've done. So if you want to send me your work, just email me at this address uh, that's coming up on the screen and please just share your work with me. Uh, so let's keep being creative and we'll carry on next week. Goodbye. Thank you.